Okay, so before I got this boring bar, I was trying a whole bunch of other boring bars, and they just weren't working. Um, I think I might have been going too fast, but uh, this is some tough stuff, and the longer the boring bar is, the less rigid it is. So the harder it is to cut, the more it flexes. Um, so we're going to see, here's how I'm going to initially try to do this. Um, we are going to go, go in halfway down the bore. Then I'm going to flip it over, and we're going to go the other halfway. Now that's not going to be perfect, okay? We're going to get it until... Uh, the hole is big enough to fit this big boring bar. Okay, so the the actual piston is an inch and a quarter. Let me just check that. Yeah, inch and a quarter. Um, this guy here is only an inch and a hundred and fifteen thousandths, like the the biggest hole it could, or the smallest hole it could possibly make. Uh, so. We should be able to flip it, do half, flip it, do the other half until this is big enough to go in, and then this should be able to go the, the full way, theoretically. So we're going to try this out. I'm going pretty slow. All right. It looks like it's cutting, which is really good. Oh, come on, focus. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut this hole, or bore this hole, until it's about an inch in diameter. And then I'm gonna do the other side, and then I'm gonna see how well they line up and go from there in terms of how much more I wanna cut and when to use the bigger boring bar. I'll bring you back when it gets more exciting. Alright, we're just about at the point where uh, this boring bar can fit, not really right now, but when it makes its first cut, it'll be able to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish this up and then flip it around, get the other side to this point, and then switch boring bars to the batter one. Okay, so let's take this guy out of here. That was in there tight. Hmm. I'm just tightening it in a position that keeps the back flat against the chuck. Well, this kind of sucks. Remember this guy? Well, he was hiding a lot more than I thought. That is a huge air pocket. Now, I don't quite know why that happened. I put plenty of vent holes. Um, so I gotta make a decision here as to what I'm gonna do. I can either uh, melt this again and try it over, or I could try to fill that with either cast iron rod, which will be pretty hard. I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is fill it with braze, brazing rod. Um, it is a wear surface though. But, uh... All right, so it's much later. <clears throat> um, what I had to do last time was I just ended up recasting the part because there was that huge void in it. Um, <clears throat> I recast the part and remachined it. I didn't do any recording because I didn't want there. I already did most of the machining on video and so it wasn't anything new. Um, 
I didn't want to record and then have it be another air hole. I think what happened last time is I poured the iron too cold and didn't have a big enough uh, gate or vent and uh, what happened was the iron solidified too quickly and I think it just um, it just shrunk from the inside and created that cavity and uh, <clears throat> the way to fix that again is to have uh, hotter iron and a bigger gate so so you want there to be like a reservoir of metal so it doesn't solidify so quickly <clears throat> and you want that to sort of be able to feed in uh, so we're gonna hone this cylinder so this guy can fit in it and uh, you see me do this before in my engine cylinder video we're just gonna get some kind of lubricant I like to use WD-40 but all I have is the PV blaster and we're just gonna spray it all up inside and on this and then we're just gonna uh, I need a better drill is what I need okay I got an actual drill this time here we go oh get more oil in there all right just about got it I think that'll do all right finally got the mill up and running and uh, we're gonna mill off this top part <clears throat> um, this is the second go right because the first one we did on a lathe but that was a failure so I'm just gonna show what I'm gonna do uh, I have this cutter here because I don't have any carbide end mills and this this stuff is being pretty tough still on me so we're gonna get it up So I finished milling it off camera, came out pretty nice, and then I drilled this hole for the steam port to go, or for the steam to go through. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is, so I didn't have, I have to use carbide drill bits because this, this thing is still really tough. Um, so this isn't exactly half an inch, whereas the one on the engine up here is half an inch, that center one. So that's fine, they don't have to be the same. But I, the next thing I have to do is, you see how there's, uh, I put transfer screws in. Uh, I want to align everything, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to machine a pin that goes through this and the hole I just drilled, so everything's in alignment, and then I'm going to just push it on there and tap it. So that's what we're going to do now, we're going to machine that pin, and I'll probably just do it in fast motion because it's pretty, it's pretty easy turning. So my camera's running out of batteries. I, don't, I can't find my charger. I think I left it at home. Uh, so I'm just gonna skip it, right? But again, I just have a piece of cast iron here, and I'm just gonna first. I'm gonna turn it to be half an inch, test fit it in the engine, and then turn one side to be I think it's seven sixteenths. Test fit it in the part I just made, and then we're gonna part it off and use that as an alignment pin. Okay, I got the little pin made so we're gonna stick that in there and then uh, put the pretty side up this side has some some breeze because the casting has some defects okay so we'll get it all aligned about half of them. All 
Alright guys, we're now several weeks later again. Um, when I went to go put that part on after drilling the, bo the bolt holes, um, it was a little off and I could have fixed it, uh, but there were too many things wrong with that casting that I just wasn't happy with, so I decided to start over yet again. Uh, but luckily, so a buddy of mine, Clark, who lives down in Mississippi, uh, we follow each other on Instagram, he saw how much trouble I was having with this thing, with this casting, and uh, he offered to cast it for me in his iron foundry, and uh, that's what he did, and it came out just beautiful. So thank you, Clark. Uh, you really did a fantastic job. Um, so now that it's actually all... Uh, I actually machined this in the same way as I did uh, the other one. So, but I didn't show it. And uh, now it goes on just like that. So I'm going to put the nuts on and we're going to see what it looks like. So you can see here, that's about as low as I can go. The fillet is actually stopping the bolt from going down any deeper. So. Uh, I'm just gonna, we're gonna put this on the mill, and I'm just gonna mill off that fillet. But you can see that it's, this slide's nice and smooth, so it's almost there. All right, we got it in the mill. I already did some of it. Now it's flat. All right, let's put let's put it on. All right, she's on. You see? Oh, there's the bottom. This thing is getting big, man. Here is a the valve. Pretty awesome. Uh, I would put it on my air compressor, compressor and test it out, but um, it's out of commission at the moment until I get a new part for it. So uh, this is this is it. This is very exciting for me because man, it took so long to make this part. I still need to drill and tap the holes for the heads, uh, but. I'm going to do that when I make the heads so, so I can transfer the holes easier. Uh, 